Hey there, baseball fans. It's Ben, and I'm back today opening packs, wax packs, from 1988 Fleer Baseball. I would call this 1988 one of the junkiest of the wax years, where just monumental amounts of the cards were produced for all Fleer, Donruss, Tops, and this is before Upper Deck came in and changed the game in 89. So let's find out what we can get here. I always thought this was a funny little design that they chose for these 1988 Fleer. I did, I, but I do like that they have these, obviously they have the stickers, and these were intended to like peel and put on the like either the you know tabs so you can organize your cards. But I do like that they put the stadiums on the back with some information. That's kind of cool. So the only insert set in here are the is the all-star insert set. And there are maybe 10 or 12 of those, and not a whole lot of great players. So even when you find an, an all-star insert, it's uh, not that exciting. So there is uh, Tony Gwynn and Vince Coleman. Hidden King and the Thief. Fully are notorious for taking pictures of the All-Star game and then just making up card themes to go along with it. <laughs> okay, it looks like we've got an All-Star insert here. This one being Eric Davis. Slugger for the Reds at the time. Timothy Leary, inventor of the, the big proponent of LSD. Totally a joke. Nice Danny Carnival shot of him being mad and striking out, I guess. Interesting choice. Bob Ojeda. All right, well, let's, let's look up what, what, uh, what we can find out about him. Cecil Fielder, before he we went off to Japan, became a home run king. Mike Eastler looking very pleased. Like it. And John Smiley, by comparison, not smiling. And Fleer also famous for putting uh, the cards in numerical order by team. So checklist playing that out. Besides kind of the normal suspects we'd be looking for in a set like this, the only rookie, there's a Carlton Fisk. It's actually a good shot of him. The only Interesting rookie cards that you might find. There's a Mark McGuire with Pat Tadler. Big bats at first. Um, would be a Tom Glavin rookie card. Which I pulled a few of those from these packs. Great action shot of Carney Lansford there with the ball coming in the frame. Nice work on that one. And then Tim Flannery with, with a surfboard. Okay. You just wonder how that came about. Why the surfboard was at the field. Why he's standing on the field with it, taking a picture. That's what I love about baseball cards. So much mystery and intrigue. The only other rookie that some people would be interested in would be like a Ron Gant rookie. And yeah, Rick Leach looking very pleased. I like those smiling pictures of these guys who realize that they are men playing a boys game and getting paid a lot to do it. What's Scott throwing here? Interesting. He's using all those fingers. I can't quite tell. But what is that? Is it Nike shirt peeking through? Yeah, Nike shirt underneath his jersey. There's some innocence about these, uh, about the game in, in the 80s that I think has been lost with the commercialization of everything. I mean, these, uh, a lot of these pictures would be vetted a lot more closely in the modern era. Yeah, there's the AL All-Stars. So they actually couldn't think of anything good to say about this with Matt Noakes and Kirby Puckett, so they just said, these are American League All-Stars. Lee Smith. Good closer. Let's see here. 
Tim Cruz. Fish. There's Tim Raines, Rock Raines, Hall of Famer there. And our last pack for the session. And this is my last pack of 88 Fleer that I've got in my possession at the moment, so it might be it for a while for this. Classic relief, Dave Rigetti and Dan Plesak. Classic relief. For Fly 11 wearing a trash bag underneath his jersey. Oh, look, Ken Daly. Double glove Daly, I'll call him. <laughs> I mean, what? is going on oh my goodness so that was really a rough set we ended up with a few of these weird all-star things plus the carlton fisk and that's it that was kind of ridiculous so baba hita um pretty sure i know a little bit about bob And he is a television sports color commentator. So there you go. He played from 80 to 1994. Was with the Mets. Was part of that 86 World Championship team. Uh, so, yeah, so this is what I was kind of remembering here, is that he was the lone survivor of a March 22nd, 1993 boating accident that killed Steve Owen, which we also saw in this, um, and Tim Cruz, who we also saw in the, these packs too. I remember when that happened. And it was pretty devastating for some people. Um, so 115 wins, 98 losses. It's a good good career record there with the 365 ERA. Not bad. Over 1,100 strikeouts. So really a pretty good career there. Uh, let's see here. A lot of baseball stats. Goes on to the Mets, which was where he spent most of his career. Went on to the Dodgers, the Indians, Yankees, and let's see what happened after retirement. Maintained a private life until 2001 when he was hired as a pitching coach in the minors. And then he was hired as a pitching coach in the minors again, spent a lot of time, and then promoted to the front office in 2007 of the Red Sox. And then became a pitching coach in high school baseball. Interesting. 2009, and joined New York as the studio analyst for Mets broadcasts. And then left the network after 2014 season, and I assume just retired there. So, successful career, you know, a tragic accident in the midst of it. And then on to uh, coaching, uh, baseball career, and some broadcasting. So, Baba Hida, um, hope you're well. Hats off to you. And the rest of you, we'll see you next time.